used to listen to the bare feet splashing in the ship and had a feeling of the faces darkened by hunger. My heart was a pendulum between her and the street. I don't know with what strength I freed myself from her eyes. I broke away from her arms. She was left clouding with tears. A global compact on refugees and a global compact for migration is in the offing. At the New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants in 2016, it was recognized that the old paradigm of refugee protection enshrined in the UNHCR has become outdated. Calcutta Research Group began its work on forced migration. Uh, it deliberately chose the phrase forced migration instead of refugee studies, which was much more conventional in late 1990s. Now, which is very well known, it was only one of the two UN certified courses, orientation course on enforced migration studies. Migration is one of the most important and pressing global issues of our time. The dialogue around lived realities um, connected with forced migration, civil, political, and religious persecution, the interplay between environmental change and displacement, and the experiences of stateless persons is the need of the hour. It was decided that a global compact on refugees and migrants will be adopted. It came with the promise of a new orientation to the global problem of migration. But how different is this global compact and what are the promises and paradoxes it comes with? Through a six days workshop and international conference organized by the Calcutta Research Group, in collaboration with the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung, these issues were explored and problematized. The participants in the event spanned the entire globe. Participants came from Australia, Singapore, Portugal, Germany, Italy, Austria, Israel, Palestine, Croatia, England, South Africa, United States, Brazil, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Afghanistan and India. There were academics, journalists, activists and community members as well. The activities of the research workshop and conference revolved around the six major themes which are the Global Compact on Refugees and Migrants, Race, Gender and Other Fault Lines in Migration, Power and the Responsibility in the Global Protection System, Immigrant Economies, Statelessness and finally, Migration Across Asia. Why is the Compact silent on the important question of race? The inaugural session began with a discussion on race and migration in South Africa. Two distinguished panelists from South Africa touched on important issues of migration and race in South Africa and the entire continent more broadly. Professor Melissa Stein of University of the Witwatersrand, Johannesburg, spoke on questions of race and migration in post-apartheid South Africa. Professor Lawrence Juma discussed how the global compact on migration will impact the African Union's approach to migration. Now, in Kenya today, uh, everything is being blamed on Al-Shabaab. Everything is being blamed on Somalis who moved across the border after the collapse of, of, of their country. And security is all being blamed on, on, um, uh, on, on foreigners who have come into the country. And so government is issued all kinds of edicts, but it's recently. The participants of the research workshop had gone through a process of online interaction with their module coordinators and developed their research papers through comments and feedbacks. Their works touch upon different facets of contemporary migration ranging from migration in Bengal, Africa, Turkey, Israel, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, the islands in the Bay of Bengal and have touched upon themes of offshore detention strategies, internal displacement, religious and ethnic violence, migration of Dalit groups, how the city provides hospitality to migrants or doesn't through the idea of the city of refuge. And it is 70 years since the passing of Resolution 194 which uh, emphasizes the right of return for Palestinian refugees. Lucy Nusebe, who has lived in occupied Palestine, interacted with the members of the audience and shared her experience with them in a face-to-face -face interaction.
A major highlight of the event was a field visit to different migrant quarters of the city. One group visited erstwhile settlements of Calcutta's old cosmopolitan migrants concentrated in parts of West and Central Calcutta. The highlights of the trip included a visit to the Posta Bazaar, Bada Bazaar, Synagogue Street, Portuguese Church Street and Armenian Street. The second group toured Calcutta's labor migrant quarters. It started with an interaction with the workers of a factory at Bantola Stannery. The next stop for the group was at the Kidarpur docks. An elaborate interaction with the majority of Muslim labor migrants, mainly from villages in the Mithila region in Bihar was arranged. The interaction was facilitated by a platform called Know Your Neighbor. The migrants talked about their lives in the slums on the dock. They have migrated because their small pieces of land in the villages are not sufficient to maintain their family. The men come and work in the urban fringes of Calcutta. Their slums lack basic amenities. Ms. Rizvi noted that despite attempts by the Bangladesh government to repatriate them, there is no real possibility of Rohingya refugees returning to Myanmar as the situation is not conducive. Another important highlight of the event were discussions on the Rohingya refugee crisis and the National Register of Citizens in Assam. The concluding day of the conference had two important discussions on these two burning issues of contemporary times. Following attacks by both the military and Rakhine ethnic groups, about 9 lakh Rohingya refugees reached Bangladesh in phases from 2017. So this is not the community that's in the camps. This is not the most abject of Rohingyas, but when we use that word, the first associations are actually quite terrible, right? So the first thing that I have to note is that this is a diasporic community, and as was very rightly pointed out, it's a middle class community. One of the most important thing is, we always consider it as a, uh, you know, insecurity of our home use. But you know, at different levels, you know, there are so many other forms of In the concluding story. session of the conference, Proshanto Ray released the latest issue of the Refugee Watch. My claim is that the aerial at present is a weak presence empirically and theoretically within migration research. Professor William Walters delivered the valedictory address of the conference. He deliberated on aerial borders and aerial geography of forced migration. Today we have, you know, all of us, with the help of all of you, our understanding is much enriched on the theme of protection, on the theme of ethics, on the, on, the, on the way in which we should approach these things. And I think this is also probably the most varied in terms of participation 
in terms of the plurality of the sub themes, uh, etc. Global refugee flows manifestly worsening in the last decade and the perceived global migrant crisis appearing deeper and more expansive than ever. A resolution titled Kolkata Declaration on the Status of Refugees and Migrants was also adopted in the concluding session of the conference. It is expected that the declaration will have an impact on international organizations working with the refugees like the UNHCR, IOM, as well as many others working with them. I come from there and I have memories. Born as mortals are, I have a mother. And a house with many windows. I have brothers, friends, and a prison cell with a cold window. Mine is the wave snatched by seagulls. I have my own view and an extra blade of grass. Mine is the moon at the far edge of the words and the bounty of birds and the immortal olive tree. I walk this land before the swords turned its living body into a laden table. I come from there. I render the sky unto her mother, and the sky weeps for her mother. And I weep to make myself known to a returning cloud. I learnt all the words worthy of the court of blood, so that I could break the rule. I learnt all the words and broke them up to make a single word. Homeland.